Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to another Scout Report show, where today we're focusing on our deadline day acquisition from Roma, Sweden's number one, Robin Olsen. To give us some insight into what we can expect from Olsen at Everton, I'm thrilled to be joined by Richard Hall, which is the chief correspondent for Football Italia, a page of which I'm a big fan, and it's a brilliant site for keeping yourself posted on all things Serie A if you're into the Italian game. It's also not the first time that Richard's been on the channel with us. He gave us some great insight into fellow new arrival, Alan, earlier this window. So a very warm welcome back, Richard. How are you doing, mate? I'm good. I'm not bad at all. Great to be back as well. And uh, I'm glad that Alan hasn't disappointed so far. He certainly hasn't. And of course, he's nursing a little bit of an injury at the moment. So we're hoping he's back in time for the big game against Liverpool. But every time we've seen him take to the field so far, it's been very good. Yeah, he's... He's a brilliant player, brilliant player. And it was really good to come on here and talk about him. And I've just, it's funny because ever since then, when he came, came over, I've sort of been paying a bit of special attention to him, thinking, don't let me down, don't make me look stupid. But uh, yeah, so far, so good. It certainly is. So on the front of, of course, Robin Olsen, he's not a name many of us are familiar with, with the exception maybe of the last World Cup in Russia, where he did get to the quarters with Sweden. And then, of course, Sweden bowed out against England. First of all, Richard, tell us a bit more about Olsen. What type of goalkeeper is he? Is he like one of these modern keepers who plays out from the back, or is he a bit of an old schooler? Uh, he's a bit of an old schooler, really. Uh, it's a funny one with Olsen because you're right. He's a bit of an enigma in the sense of he's Sweden's national goalkeeper, and you know a lot of those goalkeepers in the past most people have heard of. Uh, Olsen sort of went under the radar for a while playing in Sweden, and then went over to Copenhagen, and it was when he uh, came to Roma that he sort of was in the spotlight for the first time. The Italian media, when they first saw him, um, sort of halfway through the season, called him a Samir Handanovic light in, in the sense of he's a very tall goalkeeper, uh, he's good on crosses, um, you know, he's a very good shot stopper, um, and he's got all the attributes you would want of a goalkeeper. But you mentioned right there the sort of modern goalkeeper, that keeper who plays out from the back. And that's not what you're going to get from him at all. Um, I would say that probably one of his weaknesses is that. And we're seeing a lot of goalkeepers especially at the moment with the current situation, with teams playing a lot higher lines, goalkeepers playing up, uh, that a lot of them are being caught out. You saw probably you guys will have enjoyed watching uh, Adrian being caught out the other day in such a scenario. Uh, you know, we've seen it with Ham Sami Handanovic himself recently at Inter. Um, you know, the, the last game they played, sorry, not last game, the game against Benevento. You know, he had a great performance, but the ball comes to his feet. He's supposed to be playing it quick to the full-backs and he makes an error. Um, there's a lot to say about Olsen because it's, it, it's a bit harsh on him sometimes the way he's viewed in Italy and I'll explain more so later on. But I think realistically what you're going to get is a goalkeeper who you're not going to be disappointed on his shot stopping. As I said, his positioning's very good. And as I said before, you know, he's, he's good on crosses. Well, he should be with his height. Um, but if you're expecting much more than that on one of these new modern goalkeepers that we can see, uh, you certainly won't be getting that. Yeah, I mean... The, the one bigger, obviously, when, he, when Olsen was close to being announced as an Everton player on loan, one of the, I think a lot of fans got sceptical because we looked at some of his metrics and it wasn't, it was actually, obviously, we've been giving Jordan Pickford a lot of criticism since the start of the season and a lot of his statistics are actually worse than Jordan Pickford's. Is there any sort of explanation for that? Well, I think it's a bit of a confidence thing um, and I think it is a bit of the modern game. I mean, from what I, I mean, I, like I say, my mind is engrossed in Serie A, and so you'll know more about Everton and, and Pickford than me. But, you know, for me, I've always thought his distribution hasn't been too bad, Pickford personally. But I think that with, with Olsen, I think that distribution has been, been a bit of an issue. Um, but I also think that it's a mindset thing as well. Um, if a, a bit of background, really, um, that's really important to understanding where Olsen's journey is as, a, as, a, as not just a goalkeeper, but sort of as a um, goalkeepers. When you talk about the ability, it's much talking about what's in their head as it is in their ability. Um, Olsen got brought into Roma um, at a very difficult time. Roma had been going through a big transition, but one thing, they'd, uh, one thing they continually did was manage with their goalkeeping staff, who are some of the best in Italy, to transform goalkeepers who were looking fairly good with a lot of potential and turn them into superstars. One of them, the first one was Wojciech Szczesny, who came from Arsenal, sorry, went from, um, from Arsenal for a really short, small fee. And he came in 
And they transformed him into a goalkeeper who now has replaced Buffon and looks like one of the best in Europe. And for probably from your memories of uh, Wojciech Szczesny, you know, he's a bit of a, a risk taker. He was shaky um, in his Arsenal days, that's for sure. Absolutely. And, and what they managed to do was educate him in, in the art of goalkeeping. Uh, and he went on and, and moved on. And they replaced him then with someone who you'll certainly be familiar with, is Alisson, Alisson Becker. And again, you know, people forget that whilst they see him now being as good as he was, uh, when he was playing second fiddle to Chesney, he made a lot of mistakes, uh, in the, especially in the Europa League. But again, he came through and then the season he had after Chesney left was spectacular, hence the fee and the move to Liverpool. So what they had is two goalkeepers preceding him who were all round and improved their game massively. Great distribution, modern goalkeepers, agility was fantastic. And when Olsen came in, there was quite a bit of... Um, not concerned, but it was just a different type of goalkeeper. He wasn't the normal type you would bring in to, to, to didn't have the same qualities in the sense of, and he was also fairly unknown as well. But the expectation from the Roma fans and anyone who knows anything about football in Rome, the pressure is obscene. I mean, you know, you're talking thousands of vultures down to the training game before the derby. And there's a lot, and Rome in itself lives in Rome. They don't care about the league as such. They just care about the derby. They care about beating Lazio and they care about the club. And it's a very insular city in a weird way, hence a lack of titles. And all that pressure um, came straight down on Olsen to, to become something that they expected him to be. And so when he did play, and at, st at the start, he made some fantastic saves and had some really good games. And everyone assumed that he would then develop and become a goalkeeper like the others. The problem was, is in mid-season, there was some errors made. I mean, if you look at the one, there's one from uh, Halle Marker for Genoa where the ball goes straight under him. There's another one against Frosinone when he saves it, but it rebounds back over him. And the pressure was just on. And he never really recovered from that. And I think that season at, at uh, Roma, I think that it coincided with, uh, it was Ebi De Francesco, the coach, uh, ended up leaving. Monchi, the sporting director from Seville, was blamed for a lot of bad signings. And Olsen became almost like the scapegoat for that, unfairly. And he was voted by the Roma players as the worst signing under the Monchi era. I think that's harsh. Well, I was um, about to say so... this. I was actually just about <laughs> to touch on that, the whole Monchi thing. Yeah. That he was a very, He's a very highly rated sporting director. Um, yeah, it didn't work out for him at Rome. And why, why do you think that was? Why wasn't, and why, why wasn't Olsen a success then? Well, it's a good question because you're right, it's severe. You know, he had the infrastructure, he knew the club, he knew the way it worked. And, you know, it's like, any, it's like, a, it's like a footballer going from one club to another in some, or a different league. Sometimes it works out for them, you know, and they, they feel at home, they know the way it works, the structure. And then he went to Rome, and as I kind of touched on before, it's such a crazy club. So much politics internally. Um, you know, so, so many different people with so much power. Uh, and Jim Pallotta, the American owner at the time, came and thought he could modernise the club. Uh, he took on the ultras, it failed. He tried to build a new stadium. He promised a new stadium. Everyone knows with Italian bureaucracy, it's not going to happen that easy. Everyone became disenchanted with the vision. Uh, all of this hampered Monchi getting what he wanted, getting the resources out of Pallotta. So he had to go about it a different way. There were some bad decisions. I think that he underestimated the Italian league of what... Uh, type of play he would need for that and so all in all it became a bad experience um, with, with Olsen as I said before because of that high profile errors at a real turbulent time in the season he did become a scapegoat I think it was massively unfair in some respects and that's when you see at the end of the season uh, when Alessio Cragano from Calgary is a very good goalkeeper gets injured uh, they're very quickly to get Paolo Lopez in uh, and also ship Olsen out on loan to Calgary well, that's another thing I was about to ask was that there was a lot of rumours where if, if we didn't get Olsen, we, it, there was links to Paul Lopez as well. And of course, then there's the Roma, the player who overtook both of them, which was Antonio Morante, a veteran of the Italian mm. game. So what, what was sort of the issue? Why was Robin Olsen farmed out on loan in favour of Paul Lopez? And why, did, why was Morante better than the both of them? Well, that, that last question is a good one, um, especially. I, I think with Olsen, in some respects, as I said before, the, he's, he's, what did he say when they say his head's gone almost? It was, a, it was a matter of confidence. 
Uh, the, his back four didn't trust him. Um, he didn't have the best back four at the start to start with anyway, and there was a bit of confusion there. And I think you know the distribution, every every kick that went went wayward, he, he was started to get booed, and it just seemed as though he was the unfortunate butt of the Munchy era. You know, they they the, they all saw him as the signing that didn't work out. Was, now, this, also, not, was this also or Lopez? Yeah, this is uh, this is Olsen. And the thing is, though, this is a very good goalkeeper when he's when he's confident and sensitive. This isn't a bad. I'm not trying to say you guys have signed a bad player here. Let's just clear that up. Um, but for whatever reasons at this club at that time, you know, the, well, the reasons I've mentioned, he decided that, uh, well, the board decided that Paolo Lopez was to come in and Olsen went to Calgary. If you look at Olsen's season at Calgary, I think he's had a decent season. I think he started to get some confidence back. And I think that, you know, you start, Calgary had one of the best seasons they've had in a while. And Olsen played a good part in that. Um, especially taking over the gloves from Alessio, Alessio Cragno, who got injured, and um, keeping up those high standards. Now, at the same time, Paolo Lopez was back in Roma, uh, and in, in a fairness, he suffered some of the same stigma that Olsen had, in a sense. Um, he, he wasn't particularly uh, consistent. There was errors. There was some fantastic games as well, but it wasn't consistent enough. And, you know, but the thing was, Paolo Lopez wasn't viewed with the same disdain because he wasn't part of that munchy Palotta shambles from the season before. And so you see Marante who comes in now. Marante has been a, an excellent goalkeeper in the sense of for many a, more of a lower, mid, mid to lower clubs. And I think Marante has come in. He's a very confident goalkeeper, very stable goalkeeper. And even at, was he 37 now? He, he sees this as a big option. A big t- his, this is his moment and he's, he's certainly living it at the moment. Yeah, he's been an excellent keeper for in Serie A for about fifteen years. So it's, it's no surprise to see he's still up in and around the team, in and around the, the the top flight anyway. But obviously, it's interesting to see that Olsen and Lopez are both sort of. There was even more fear that we'd get Lopez. I don't think many people were keen on that either. But interestingly enough, like you say, he did he did a lot better at Cagliari, but. Why was it when Alessio Cragno returned to fitness that he dropped to the bench again? That's nothing, right? This is really important. That's nothing to do with Olsen. Uh, I don't, you know, you can't put any sort of blame on him for that because he had a, a, a fairly solid season, in my opinion, with Calgary. The thing is, Alessio Cragno, the season before, got voted Italy's sex, sex, second best goalkeeper, uh, which is some, some accolade. If he hadn't got injured, there was talk of him actually going to Roma. Uh, in, in, a, in a swap deal with Olsen. Uh, you know, you look at Calgary's president, when he talks about Olsen, he says that, you know, he's an excellent goalkeeper, he's an excellent character. He was victimised at Roma, you know, and it, it was unfair. And he's the words I think of the Cagliari president. You say yeah, those, absolutely. Those the yeah. So he was, well. yeah, and he, he, was, he was very much sort of saying that the media spotlight on, on Olsen was, was unfair. And he was very, you know, very keen to bring him in. Rates him as a very good goalkeeper. And in the end, you know, as I said, the only problem was when you've got Alessio Cranio, who's, let's, don't forget, he's only 25. Uh, you know, the president's going to be looking and thinking, well, we're going to be able to keep Cranio for another season, perhaps. And then, you know, the teams that have looked at him before, Inter are looking at him potentially as a replacement for Handanovic. Roma have looked at him. There's a lot of teams there who, who could go for him. But everyone's just waiting to see if that shoulder holds out for this season. And then maybe he'll move on. I'm sure that Calgary, if they had the choice, would have liked to have kept Olsen for longer. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's just not feasible for a club who were trying to put all their resources into signing Rajin Anglam and not they got that through. So they've not got a lot of money. It's very difficult for them. And so Olsen eventually has, uh, has, has moved on. So, of course, that brings us to the, the final question and the present day with him here now at Everton. It's the most important question for the fans listening to this show. Can Robin Olsen put pressure on Jordan Pickford for the Everton goalkeeping jersey? Can he raise the standards? I believe he can. I mean, Rob Green wrote a good piece um, in the sense of just about two, or it was almost about how two goalkeepers really can push each other. And I think that's right. I think with, I mean, I'm not aware of Pickford's mentality in comparison to, to Olsen, but I think with Olsen now, I think under Ancelotti, um, I think you know, who seems to be able to give a lot of faith to these players. And, you know, he's got that 
fantastic ability to do so, as well as being an excellent coach. I think that, you know, he can give him the confidence. And it is about confidence with Olsen. Uh, for me, if, if, if it was me, you know, you look at how some goalkeeping situations are dealt with. I mean, take Kepper at Chelsea, for instance. I mean, in my opinion there, that's been almost appallingly handled by, by Chelsea in the sense of the goalkeeper who's got a lot of talents, making some mistakes, and they just keep him in and keep him in and keep him in. Uh, until eventually, you know, it's just gone too far. It's like he's been holding uh, up to dry. Some, absolutely. And I feel sorry for Kepper in some respects for that, you know, because Lampard didn't have faith in Caballero either, so it was very difficult. But with this situation, it's handled correctly. I can see it being very beneficial because at the end of the day, he's Sweden's national goalkeeper. Um, I said before, he's got a lot of qualities. Um, but again, it's, it's whether Everton, you know, I mean, you tell me, if Everton are if, uh, playing out from the back all the time, they will have to alter their game a little bit. You're not going to get that same distribution. But it's, Ancelotti is good enough as a coach to think, OK, this is a quality goalkeeper who's down on confidence. And I've got another excellent goalkeeper in Pickford who's probably also down on confidence. And it's just how he manipulates that situation. For me, if he uh, gives uh, Olsen a run in the team or keeps Pickford in, whichever way he does it, that, you know, once one of those, if he does make a mistake, switch the goalkeepers and just give the other one a chance because that breeds confidence. And I think with Olsen as well, as I said, it's really key for me that Everton just adapt the game slightly to suit how he plays. And I don't see why people shouldn't do that for goalkeepers when they're so willing to do it, say, to, adapt, to accommodate a defensive midfielder or an attacking midfielder. If they do that and slightly alter the game, I think you could have two very good goalkeepers who will push themselves. Um, you know, he's, he's got a lot of quality, uh, as I've said before. And, you know, for, for me... Um, He's, he's a good shot stopper and he, I think physically he'll be well adapted to the Premiership very, very quickly. Uh, language again, another plus. So again, it, for me, it just depends on how he's put into the squad. You know, he is on a bit of an upward lift after being at Calgary. It's a fresh start. Someone like Ancelotti taking him on it might be the right time to play him, you know, if there is another error from Pickford and, and see what happens. But, you know, it's, it, like I said, with many, the experience for me, what he had in Rome, uh, did really shake him, and I don't blame him for that whatsoever. Um, so I just hope that, you know, if he does come into Everton, that he gets a fair chance, and I think you can have a very good goalkeeper in your hands. Yeah, that's, well, I think that's what we're hoping for. But one last thing is, of course, how is he mentally? Is he quite a level-headed goalkeeper? Is he, or... Because obviously we've had a lot of issues with Jordan Pickford's very erratic in his terms of personality, which is kind of yeah, affecting now, us a bit. Yeah, now this is interesting because... It's funny when you talk of goalkeepers because you can have erratic goalkeepers who can be actually quite brilliant. You know, you look at someone like Bartes in a sense for a Premier League reference. Um, but also, you can. Olsen for me is very steady. When things are going well and he's playing well, you know, he's very calm, very collected, and you just feel like you've got a really safe pair of hands there. You know, he's coming for the crosses, as I said before, positionally, he's very good. Uh, like I said, it's a bit of old school distribution, but that's not always a problem. And you have what you would say is a very solid goalkeeper. The problem for me is when, if he does make a mistake, it's not saying that he's just completely going to fall apart, but you can tell it's starting to work on him a little bit. And, you know, there's just it, it, it can, I'm going to be interested to see how he reacts. Because as I said, he didn't really make any huge errors at Calgary. Let's be honest, when he was at Rome, apart from poor distribution, there's only two main areas that I can think of off the top of my head, uh, the, the Genoa and the Frosinone games, where he made errors, but it was a level of criticism he got. So for me, if people give him time, have a bit of patience, um, yeah, I think that, you know, if he's confident, he'll grow, go from strength to strength. Brilliant to hear. And that's obviously, a, a much. I think we've had a lot of negative sort of reception to this deal at first. So it's, it's good to hear that there is a lot more positivity to this deal than what meets the eye initially. So thanks for letting yeah. us know about this, Richard. It really need, like, could lift the spirits of the fans. I think we want to see a goalkeeper who's capable of, if not replacing Jordan Pickford, but certainly pushing him to lift his standards because the goalkeeper position has been a real position of issue for us so far this season. It's Thankfully, we've won all our games so far and it hasn't come back to bite us, but we know we've got to raise the gate, raise our game in terms of the goalkeeping position and it's, it's good to see that you think that Robin Olsen has got the ability to possibly change things in terms of that position for us. Well, for me, it's a win-win for you because, I mean, Jordan Pickford's a very, okay, I know he's had errors uh, recently and I know he can be erratic, as you say, 
But there's talent there. There's a lot of quality there. And, you know, I mean, what age is he now? Is he 20? 26. 26. He's still, still young for a goalkeeper. Um, for me, if Olsen could come in, yeah, of course he's going to push him because he's an international goalkeeper. Um, but also as well, you're on a win-win. He's on a loan deal, um, you know, so, and it, even if he does it, you know, if, he's, if he comes in and he pushes Pickford and makes him up his game a little bit, which any half-decent goalkeeper coming in would do, um, and say he does come in, he doesn't perform particularly well, but he can ship him right back to, uh, to Rome after the season's gone. Um, so there's no issue there. But the same point, you know, if he does even come in and make Pickford up his game a small, small uh, you know, from a, any sort of angle, then that's great news. And, you know, if you're talking about dependable second goalkeepers, I mean, the Sweden international goalkeeper is not bad. So I think for Everton, you know, it's a low risk, high reward signing. Uh, whilst I also agree with a lot of your you know, your fans, yeah, okay, fair enough. He's not going to inspire people to be like, you know, who are fantastic. You know, you've just, uh, you've just signed um, Chesney or something. You know, okay, yeah, I understand that. But still, you know, it's, uh, it might not be the most inspiring signing, but that doesn't mean it can't be a very clever one. That's great to hear. And it's brilliant to hear from you again, Richard. It's obviously a lot more uplifting than what a lot of people have been saying. And, you know, that's exactly what we want to hear, low risk, high reward. <laughs> So there you have it, guys. That's the lowdown on Robin Olsen. Let us know your opinions on the Olsen signing below. Drop us a comment. Give this video a like and subscribe as well for more great content uh, as we move on through the season. All that's left to say is thank you so much, Richard, for coming back on the show again and giving us some more insight into players coming over from Italy. It's great to, always great to have you on the show and be great to have you on again, of course. No, thank you very much. and Always enjoy it. So happy to come back on whenever you link with anyone from Syria. Absolutely, mate. The pleasure's mine as well. So they, And the, of course, you guys as well. Thank you for watching on the Toppy Blues and we'll see you later. <laughs>